Oh, 
sanctuary, maybe it's in the church, maybe it's live online, and I get a picture of um, somebody that's been in a boxing ring, and God is undoing the boxing gloves, and he's saying, take them off, take them off. You don't need to try and fight in your own strength anymore. You don't need to rely on your own strength. But I'm standing with you. I am for you, I'm all around you. And I will give you the strength and power you need. Lean on me. Don't rely on your own strength. God is calling you back to him tonight. You don't need to fight, you don't need to, you know, want to be angry or want to be fed up or whatever it is. I just can get this, it was almost like there's a, there's a bumblebee that's buzzing around inside of you. And God is, is saying, just, just come to me tonight. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Whatever that means, whatever that represents in your life, the Lord is, is saying, come to me tonight. And I also had a picture of somebody in a box. <laughs> and as, as we were singing and praising that, that you, Lord, were sending your light, you were sending your Holy Spirit into this box, you were releasing in her shape. The more we sang, the more we lifted up your name that this person was released from this box. And that you're telling them to go forward and to just keep that freedom, that feeling that you've given them tonight to continue to build on it, to allow you back into their lives, to open their hearts to you again so they can go forward. Thank you, Jesus. Facebook, but we, we need to pray for somebody that's very close to us, a very special lady who is um, very ill, and she probably hasn't got that much longer to live. Um, so Lord, we just want to pray for this beautiful lady, this beautiful sister in the Lord. We want to lift her up to you, Lord. You know her, you know everything about her, you know about her family. And we just pray that you would be near to the family. Thank you, this lady loves you so much with all of her heart. She's a real woman of God. And so we do just want to, as, as a church, as North Springfield Baptist Church, and as um, in his presence tonight, we just want to lift up this lady that's, that's very, very well known to this church here as well. And we just thank you, Father, for what you're, what you're going to do. We just want to come now and just lift her up to you, Jesus. Thank you. 
so long and, and this young man is, is he's only 19 and he's, he's, he's getting iller and he's getting iller and, and we are praying for him Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong I pray for strength for this young man and his family he is Lord he is Lord hallelujah Christ alone cornerstone weak
have hope. I really hope Nick's got the word for this. Um, I'm going to change guitars over because this one's starting to go right out of tune up here. This is a song by um, Aaron Keys, and it's, um, I just feel like the words are very powerful, this, this song. We have done it before, so I hope to say that Nick's got it on there. Have you got it on there? Sovereign over all, Nick, yeah. Sovereign over all. Well, there is strength within your sorrow. Yeah. So I'll just see if we can find it. If not, me and Bella will just sing it. It was on the list. Yeah. yeah. So, sovereign over all. We're going to sing it next. Okay, yeah. I'm sure Nick put it up in a minute. If not, just yeah, listen to the words. Did, did, you, did you find it? No, I was just trying it somewhere. <coughs>
anyway. We're gonna, Nick, can you go down and find Uruch? It's probably down quite a way down. The next song we're gonna sing is a song, it's talking about the Uruch, the wind, the breath of God, breathing over us. And we're just gonna sing that out. Nick's just gonna go around with the flag. And I, I believe as we sing it, and as Nick goes around with the flag, the Holy Spirit is just going to come and just, you know, wash over us, just breathe over us. So Nick, if you just, I'm just going to start to pray that. I'm going to start to sing. Just do whatever God tells you, Nick.
I'm setting you free tonight. Be free, my child. Be free, my child. I am setting you free tonight. Free from your past. Free from your failures. Free from all of your insecurities. I'm setting you free tonight. Be free, my child. Be free. Walk forward into victory. You don't need to look over your shoulder anymore, but look straight ahead. For I am with you, I am for you. My word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Underneath you are my everlasting arms. I will comfort you, I will strengthen you, I will be to you all that you need. Be free, my child. Be free, be free, my child. Don't keep looking back over your shoulder, but look ahead. For I am the victorious one, I am the mighty one, I am the great I am. I will be to you all that you need. Take hold of my hand afresh tonight, child. Be free, my child. Be free, be free, be free. Oh. So in his presence, six years, God is a faithful God, and when God speaks, if we obey him, we see much fruit. Me and Nick were out cycling one day in 2017, I think it was probably the um, summertime, and I just felt God say to me the words, in his presence, and I said, oh, okay, God, well, what, 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 you know, what? What do you want me to do? I felt the Lord say, I want you to, to run an event where people can come into my presence or they can know the freedom of, of, of something being spirit-led. You know, with, with church services, we only have a certain amount of time. We can't, we just have to do lots of things in the, in the time with God. But to hand over a time where people can just come and worship me and I will do something in people's hearts and lives. I will just move them on, I will, I will set them free, I will speak to them. I just want you to make space and do this. And that's what God said. And I just said, well, God, hey, if you want it, how can we do it? And I just can't thank God enough for this church because um, at that time we didn't, you know, we, we couldn't do it in our bus. It's not big enough. We couldn't do it in our home. And I spoke to our minister at the time and he, he spoke with the deacons and he, 
come back and said, yes, you know, you, you can run in, run in his presence in the church. And it's just been amazing because for the six years we've been running in the church, and probably about a year ago I talked to the minister and t talked to the deacons. We felt that it should come under the North Springfield Baptist Church umbrella because it's the home within his presence, and we just wanted it to come under the, the church that we're now members of. And, um, We've just seen God touch so many people's lives. I know we're not great in always loads in numbers, but it's people's heart. That people that want want more of Jesus and want more of God are here, and they come here. And I know that I'm worship mad. I'll just keep singing for hours and hours because that's I love Jesus so much. And I just want to bring a little message tonight. Um, I just felt to leave it towards the end. And again, it's just something I wrote yesterday. And I just felt it does tie in a bit with in his presence. And uh, many years ago when I was at school, my secondary school, we went to school and one of the first things we had to do, Miss told us to do, was we needed to go to our needlework class. And she said, you, you have to make a green apron. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I hate it. And we went into the needlework class, you've got to make all make a green apron and you've got to embroider, and I think we only were allowed to embroider in yellow, our name on it. And it was really hard to do because I hated needlework, but we, we all were in the class, we all made these aprons, they were all the same. And I said, Miss, well, what are these aprons for? She said, well, Marina, they're for domestic science, as it was called in them days, <laughs> where you had to learn to clean out the brushes and the combs, and goodness knows what else, you did, you know, wash things, do things. But also, it was for um, the cookery class as well. So we had to make these aprons. Every single girl that came to school had to make this apron. And I often thought about this a lot, thinking, why can't we choose the colour? Why can't we choose the colour? Why can't we choose the material? <laughs> Why can't we decide what the apron should look like? And I asked the teacher, and her answer was swift and fast. Because everyone has to look the same in the class. Of course, the, schools, the school has rules and regulations, lots of them, and we have to go by them, and you have to go by them. Despite the fact that the cookery teacher scratched her head with a knit finger and then poked it in her... <laughs> ...and <laughs> <laughs> right. Here we are, cleaning out these brushes in the back. But anyway, that, that was, it was her cake, it wasn't ours, but I just thought, you know, all these aprons, all of these things, and I just felt, as I was thinking about this, you know, I was comparing this picture that God gave me, because I'd forgotten all about it, I was comparing the aprons and conformity and control and all this entailed to the rules and regulations that we see mentioned in the Bible, because there's lots of rules and regulations in the Old Testament. Rules and regulations are important. And we're encouraged as Christians to, you know, to abide by rules and regulations. Obviously, you know, not parking on the airlines, you know, going up, don't go up the wrong way, street the wrong way. There's lots of rules and regulations. But what about freedom? What about freedom in our lives? The Bible speaks about spiritual freedom. We should not be bound or shackled to rules and regulations. And I'm talking about spiritually here. A relationship with Jesus is about freedom and intimacy. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Intimacy and freedom. And in Galatians 5.1, I'm coming to a Bible verse here, Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. As believers, all of us, we're urged to stand firm in our freedom and resist any attempt to be burdened by spiritual bondages. You know, I, so much of my life when I was a young Christian, there were lots of things like that, spiritual bondages, and it really affected me. And, and some of these spiritual bondages can be legalism, false teaching, it can be religion, you know, a whole lot of rules and regulations. They seek to un undermine our confidence in the grace of God. You know, we are under grace, we're not under law and legalism. Amen. Our Christian life is a journey, right? It's a journey. And the key theme of this journey is the pursuit of freedom in Christ. Because my prayer for in his presence is that the people will become more free in their spirit. They will become more free and they will, it will add a, an ingredient of freedom into our hearts and life. Christ has won, Christ has won the freedom for us. Hallelujah. And he calls us to stand firm. 
and hold on to our freedom in Christ. That's what we're to do. Are we living under the law or legalism? Or are we living under the Spirit? The Spirit, in, the Spirit empowers us to live godly lives. Through this we can see the fruits of the Spirit which fulfill the requirements of the law. We must not use our freedom as an excuse to, to live a sinful life and to get into all of that kind of behaviour. We mustn't use it, but rather serve one another in love. And my prayer is for this last six years and all the other things that we do. By the way, it's the Healing Bus Mobile Prayer Ministries, 14 years this month. My prayer is all that I've done and all that Nick's done, that we've been able to serve you in love and to just do something where God can be have all the praise and glory. The purpose of Christ's work on the cross was to set us free. Oh, this is brave of you, baby. Okay. I'm getting too excited. This is, a re- this is a reality that has the power to transform our lives and our relationship with God. If we let the power of the cross and the freedom of God come in our lives, it will transform them. And we will become more like Jesus. The power of Christ in us transforms our lives, the freedom in us. The yoke of slavery can convey the weight and burden of living under the law. We are to reject this yoke, embracing freedom that Christ has secured for us through his death and resurrection. Let's reflect on the freedom that Christ has won for us. May there be, may there are still areas of our life that we need to get let God in. That's what we were hearing tonight. God coming, the Holy Spirit coming. God wants to set us free. If we develop a deep and abiding relationship with Jesus, this will bring stability and security in our lives. We will know the Lord's love in a deep way. That's why I get so excited, because I love Jesus so much. I love him so much. Be vigilant in guarding our spiritual freedom. I've I've been rejected. I've been had a go a lot of times by people in the past. I was in a um, I won't say where it was somewhere, and I was told, um, "Oh, you have to, you have to pick all the, all the numbers out of the hymns. You, you know, you've got to do all this." And the other, "Oh my goodness, okay, I'll do it all." And they, they knew that I could be like, "I'm oh, a little bit tonight." And by the end of the time, it was time for me to leave that place. They turned around and they said, "We're, we're running a weekend, and we want you to lead the worship. We're not going to ask you to get all the hymns and all the numbers in the hymn books. Just do what God tells you to do. We want you to do it." Finally, the Lord broke through it, but it was quite hard. But we need to be vigilant in guarding our spiritual freedom. We can share this message with others, encouraging them to take hold of the freedom that is found in Christ. Let's be a living example of the power of the gospel. Let our lives testify and show the transforming power and work of God's grace in our lives. Let's not keep it to ourselves, but let's share it with others. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And so often, the devil's a liar. He tries to come with all of these things. It's freedom, it's freedom, it's freedom. So I hope that, you know, as I've been sharing this word tonight, I felt to leave it towards the end, that God um, has uh, well spoken to us through that word. So unless anyone's got anything else to share, we'll just carry on maybe do another one song or something because it's coming near to half nine. Has anyone got anything they want to share? Thank you for being so patient. You know me, I just keep singing. <laughs> Nick said, I've never prayed so much in the whole of my life since I've been married to her. <laughs> he had a quiet life before. <laughs> right, let's let's just let's sing Jesus take me as I am. I'll get rid of some of these ones. Just sing Jesus take me as I am and um, my peace I give up to you, yeah. Mm, I don't need them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you do need prayer for anything after, we, we'd love to pray with you. Please have some more food before you go, because there's loads of food down there. And we, you know, we, it'd be nice to. You must be hungry after all the singing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.